This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. What's up, guys? This is the week of September 17th. This is The Dime. This week, we're talking about fast-acting edible cannabis products. Recently, Wana Brands introduced a new and innovative product to the edible market, fast-acting gummies. Traditional edibles products typically take roughly 30 to two hours to take full effect, and those effects can last, in some cases, up to six hours. However, Wana claims that their new gummies have an onset of roughly five to 15 minutes, depending on the individual. Kellen, how is fast-acting edibles even possible? I thought this was an interesting topic because for I read it and I was like, did we do this dime last week or the other week? Because like, I swear we had this conversation, right? But I digress, right? <laughs> uh, it's not. So fast acting is possible because at the end of the day, what they're doing is getting the active, the API, right? The active pharmaceutical ingredient or the cannabinoid into your blood quicker, right? So... Traditionally, when you eat an edible, it goes into your stomach, your stomach processes it, goes into your intestines, is then absorbed, goes through the liver, and then finally, after it goes through all of those steps, it's in your bloodstream and can interact with your CB1 receptor, and then you can now feel the effects of eating THC. Fast acting means that they have found a way for the THC molecule to bypass going into your stomach to get into your, into your blood. So they are able to have the THC molecule absorbed sublingually would be my guess, meaning that it's absorbed through the mouth, right? And so there's certain chemical tricks that they can play to design the molecule so that it can be introduced to the bloodstream through the mouth. Is so that it's a, instead of the stomach? Yes. No, and not the stomach, right? It would be the intestine. The liver, the intestine. Right, but the stomach is going to process it and kind of probably protonate it and change it a little bit so that then the stomach and then the intestines handles it as well. And then it also goes through the liver too before it gets into your blood. So you may or may not know, but my question to you is how? What do you mean how? How? Like, like elaborate on the how, how what? Sure. So you talked about eating the edible, right? And then it going through the intestine and then obviously binding with the receptors, but instead it's going to be sublingual through the mouth. Yeah. How, how does that, happen? that's the proprietary secret, right? I see. Right. So that is how they're doing it. There's a bunch of different like chemical ways to have that occur from a sublingual standpoint. Um, uh, I'm not a sublingual expert by any means, but I, I know that there is ways that you can um, increase the bioavailability of the molecule. Right. So by either encapsulating it in a specific molecular structure that then is more susceptible to uptake by the enzymes in your mouth um, or the receptors in your mouth that can uptake these kind of molecules and introduce them into your blood, then uh, that, that's exactly how it happens. I mean, uh, a good analogy uh, is chewing tobacco, right? Like Chewing tobacco, the nicotine gets into your blood through your gums, right? They have a couple different ways that they introduce the nicotine into your gums. Um, depending on what brand of chew you're using, it could be either fiberglass, which is terrible, right? That it cuts your lips to introduce it. Or um, Copenhagen actually uses an acid in their tobacco that breaks down your gums to have the uh, nicotine introduced sublingually. It's not going to be like that from an edible, right? What they're going to do is they're going to probably encapsulate it in another case of molecules that then that case of molecules can be absorbed through a receptor in your mouth. And that is the sublingual way to get the pharmaceutical into your blood, right? Um, that would be my guess as far as how it's going is sublingually. Better or worse for the industry? Better. Because I think that, and I, this is, I'm not speaking with a ton of scientific primary literature background right now. This is just kind of like an educated guess, if you will. If it is sublingually, it's going into your blood without having to be processed by your stomach, your intestines, and your liver. 
And I think the biggest knock on edibles, at least from when Colorado originally launched edibles, was that people freak out, right? Like they literally lose it, right? And that's because when the THC molecule goes through your stomach and through your intestines and through your liver and then binds to your brain, it's no longer THC. It's a molecule called 11-hydroxy-THC, which has a much higher binding efficiency, right? So it actually lasts a lot longer and creates a much more potent effect, right? Than the traditional THC molecule, right? And so couple that with the, the long onset, you have individuals who've never tried cannabis. They think eating cannabis is the safest way to do it. They then eat cannabis and nothing happens for an hour. So they eat more cannabis because they're like, well, this is dumb. I'm just gonna eat more. Then they wait another hour and all of a sudden it hits them. And then they're like, I've never tried cannabis and now I'm super high. And then they have another dose coming right after that because they ate more because they weren't feeling the effects. And then that leads to these panic attacks and these freak out sessions that um, were recorded in the news in the early days in Colorado until they kind of got the dosing right and homogenization and all these other aspects, uh, which is why there is a limit in the rec market of how much THC you can buy in an edible, right? Like they will not sell you more than 100 milligrams because they're like people just lose it. And so I think it's a really good thing because having it introduced sublingually lets it go straight into the bloodstream right? And then it's just THC, right? So you're not going to have as significant of an effect um, as you would with the edible 11 hydroxy. I think that's a, that's a great point. And I think, <laughs> I, I, I think that's a great point. And, and that's not one that I had kind of understood either, that it's not the same sort of chemical that it, I thought it would be the same. And kind of thinking about that is a zero chance that I'm going to be able to express that to someone else because the common experience that I hear is that it takes too long, which they've solved that problem. Doesn't work, which is a ridiculous statement, or I get too stoned. And there's a million other reasons why all those things happen per person. And I think it's because people compare edibles from like a cannabis uh, concept to smoking. And the instant feeling that you have when you, when you rip a bowl versus taking an edible, I think people are still looking for that sort of quick feeling of relaxation or calmness. And and if you have a fast acting edible, I think that'll kind of supplement the people who want to take the edibles, but don't want to wait the time. I think if you're consuming cannabis from a relaxation standpoint, you just got home from work, you don't want to take an edible at five o'clock and be stoned at seven. You want to take an edible at five o'clock and you want to be stoned by 515 because at seven, you probably got to move on with your other responsibilities in your life. And I think by, by kind of speeding up the the fast acting method, I think could push more people to, to move to the edible from a consumption standpoint. Yeah. And I think in the future too, honestly, this is just a random thought, but it's a healthier way to ingest the molecules for sure. Right. And so if you compared it to like the tobacco industry, say in 20, 30 years, right, where people are trying to quit smoking, this would be a great alternative for individuals who are chronic smokers right. who are looking to no longer smoke because it turns out when you light something on fire and then inhale it, it doesn't matter what it is, it's not good for you. That's wild, right? Wow. That's a <laughs> PSA to all the tobacco companies listening to this. <laughs> well, the tobacco companies are smart because they took all their tobacco and extracted the nicotine. Yeah. That's and then they smart. made all of the e-juice industry. Yeah. They're like, we'll just find someone else that's addicted to nicotine. I mean, some Nicorette gum has to buy nicotine from someone, right? Yeah. Why not Marlboro? <laughs> but like, <laughs> besides the point, um, yeah, I think that there's a ton of possibilities for this kind of uh, technology and it's definitely here to stay. And I know a lot of people like in Colorado, there's a lot of really cool um, spinoffs on it, like these fast acting dissolvable pills and all these other technologies that are being implemented to um, try to get the effects of smoking, but without the negative um, health side effects. I dream of a day where I can go to a, a restaurant and eat a meal and feel as lightly subdued as I feel when I take one of my two to ones that I love so much. Those are the concepts that I, I dream of because like you go to a restaurant, you can have a beer, six beers, 10 for some, 
Um, or you go to a restaurant and have a meal with a light amount of cannabis infused inside and you leave there and be like, I feel phenomenal. That is literally, I had a dinner like that, Brian, and it was one of the best dinners ever. I know. And I still, fingers crossed, will able to accomplish that this December. Hopefully, right? Hopefully, hopefully. Socially distancing, though. Yeah, actually, I don't think they do that in Las Vegas anymore. Um, <laughs> prediction time. What does this mean for the futures of edibles? Do you think that other companies producing products are going to be able to replicate what Wana had? Or, cons- or on the other side, are consumers going to expect edibles going forward once they experience Wana to be fast acting? Such as in the a- Amazon comparison, in the olden days, you used to get a product shipped to you, it would take three to five days. Amazon was like, we're gonna do two days. Now everyone else is two days. The industry has moved, the expectations are moved. Is that gonna happen with edibles? Are people going to expect edibles to be fast acting going forward? See, I think that, that that's a very good question and it kind of touches on a bunch of different levels, right? Because at the end of the day, I think it really boils down to what was the techno- technological innovation that Wana Brands is applying to the edible to actually have it fast acting, right? Um, if it is a very unique technology that has not been applied to other chemical industries such as pharma or nutraceutical industries, if it's super unique, can it be patented? If they can patent it, then they're going to be the only one that can license technology that's going to limit the consumer exposure, in my opinion. If they can't patent it, right, because say someone else already has it, then every single edible company would be, it would be a bad decision on their part to not implement this kind of technology into their active product SKUs, then resulting in all edibles having that same effect of fast acting, right? So I think that it really kind of has those multiple levels of like, okay, what's the technology? Is it replicable? or can people just copy it right and i think that that's where it's really going to go and these are kind of the really beginning of the wave that uh i believe is coming next which is just massive amounts of patent litigation and filing of these kind of patents associated with cannabis and all of these things within uh kind of like the more mature business if you will um so i mean what do you think brian I think strategically you're, you're, you're spot on. If, if it's a technology, what moat that they've built, then it'll be hard to, to kind of infiltrate. But I, I think from a consumer side, people don't go back. So if you're like edibles, like I do, and you don't want to wait an hour, like I don't, and I get a lot of product that is quick and fast acting. And if they make it two to one, which I hope they do, and I can get it from them, I'll only buy their products. But the expectations going forward will be, I need it to be fast acting. And what if you're, what if you're in Las Vegas though on vacation and Wana Brands is not in Las Vegas? Cause well then like, I'll, as a edible consumer versus like a vape one, I'll just select a normal one. And but you're gonna be looking for, yep. you'll look for another brand with the fast acting kind of yep. effect. That'll be something that I'll want. That'll be a conversation that I'll have. If I can't find that, I want this. And someone will either lie to me and tell me this one can do it, or they'll tell me the truth and be like, none of these can do it. Enjoy your normal two to ones that you always buy. And I'll say, okay, thanks. But I'll look for that. That'll be something that I want. So really similar, I really, really don't wanna harp on that. But I think it's like the delivery style where the expectations, once it, once people experience it, that, they don't go back in their lives. They're like, this is a standard. I only want this. And as someone who loves edibles, I only would want fast acting because like I said, I don't want to get home at five o'clock or home as in like leave my office at five o'clock and go sit on the couch and then I have to wait till seven to feel the effects of the edible. I, I want it to be, I take it and I feel it right away. No, and, I, and, and totally, especially if you experience it once, you're like, I'm not going to do that two hour thing. And the other thing too, is it's a different molecule. Different molecule, which is a whole other conversation for another day, because I would love to be able to have that conversation with someone else and explain to them that that was probably the reason why they took the edible and freaked the fuck out. But we've got a long way to go from an educational standpoint. And I think that's the exciting fact is that you just described some a concept that is one reason why one reason the other and 
the industry is not even close to understanding those thoughts. No. They're so far behind from a consumer experience. I like that would blow people's minds. We're still having people walk into dispensaries who only say, I want the products with the highest THC and that's all they want. And that's not even here on the East coast. So like we are so many steps behind even the conceptual ideas and the understandings of basic understandings of products. Yeah, I agree. I think, and consumers are just completely lost. They don't even know what they want. And bud tenders are telling them things that they don't really aren't educated enough on. And it's just, you know, it, it is the wild, wild west still. So it is still maturing and there's a lot of room for growth within the space. Cool. Thanks everyone for listening.